as I said to you, we had we had the the, the national standards uh, or what we think are good principles for community engagement. When we asked practitioners if they're using it, they would say, "Oh, we're using some of them some of the time." Others not so. Do we use all 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 t well, at the time it was ten? Do we use all ten all the all the time, or do we use some of them some of the time? And so clearly we hadn't explained ourselves as as well as we as we we should have or could have. And so as a result, we developed the voice tool in order to put those um, standards into practice. And so the, the the voice tool is structured into three elements. One is the planning process, and that's the start before you even start an engagement actually thinking about what the plan is um, and within that there are elements of thinking about well what's our purpose uh, and and so as you'll see as I describe this you'll see that the standards will start to come through you'll start to hear familiar terms when when I talk about purpose you'll be thinking right that's the planning standard so peppered within these sections are each of the standards so by the, the by virtue of just answering the questions you're starting to to meet the the national the, the the principles for good quality community engagement so what's the purpose of our engagement is a, is one of the first questions so it's really, the tool is just a series of questions that when you enter information into it uh, it's, it produces a report for you which you say which will it'll take you through the, the planning process who should be involved thinking about um who, if we if we think, think about wraparound childcare, it's those um, it's parents, it's um, private and and public sector uh, care providers, it's grandparents, it's maybe people within the wider community who provide venues. Uh, you know, it's 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 really up to to you in the planning process to decide. Um, you know how wide the engagement is itself, but what we would encourage is you to think about those less heard voices, and it might be the the um, the local Polish community who who maybe are are working within the city and they they have, should have a voice within this. So who should be involved in terms of the community, and then also who should be involved in terms of agencies. So there might be an umbrella group for childcare within the area. There might be, um, there's Westminster Council, maybe there's a childcare provision unit within that. There might be um, other agencies that you think should actually be involved in these discussions. All, all of it is just the planning stages. You, you can't guarantee that they're going to be involved. Uh, then it's uh, thinking about the change that you and partners want to see. So it's thinking about what do you want from this engagement? And that may be that you want to have as wide a, a range of opinions as possible from the community uh, in terms of the, the engagement. And also you want to produce options uh, for wraparound childcare. And then what barriers are there for people to get involved in the engagement? And what resources have you got to overcome those? Well, the barriers are that uh, language um, for certain aspects within our community. Um, B, explaining our purpose is going to be really important about, you know, we're serious about um, childcare and we want to want to hear people's voices. Um, uh, so um, it, it, it may well be an accessible venue, it may well be the transport to get to, to that. So it's just thinking about what the kind of key barriers and thinking what resources in terms of uh, money, staff, uh, time that the, uh, and skills that you need to, in order to 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 meet um, meet those um, meet those barriers and overcome them. And then the last bit is the actions, and that's that kind of um, what some people call the critical path, which is well, if we're going to start this off, we need to put a, some comms material together, put something on Facebook, put something out into the community about wraparound childcare. We're serious. Let's have a discussion. Uh, then booking booking venues, or, or you might do a, a questionnaire, uh, which is out there. We're serious about childcare. Tell us what you think. Answer the five questions. Um, do, do you use childcare currently? What are the barriers if you don't? How do, how can childcare be improved? Whatever you decide, those questions might be collating that information into a. Uh, 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 into maybe some focus groups and saying, you know, here's what the survey told us. What what is what's your experience of childcare as a as a parent or a grandparent or as a provider uh, within the community? And then into maybe a, a wider meeting um, where you want the, 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 the you know wider partners to hear each other. Maybe you want statutory sector partners to be involved in those discussions so they can hear the community's experience of childcare, wraparound care, and the issues that have impact on them. And then you'll produce an options plan that will come from that. And, and that's that's as far as your engagement will get. Whatever you do next will be a, 
you know, the, the, the you know some sort of delivery, and hopefully you've got the goodwill of the community to make that happen through good quality community engagement. So that's your plan. The do section is as that plan is happening, it's going to take you three months, four months to to put these this kind of stuff into in place. You're going to, uh, you know, in February, you're going to have the questionnaire out there. You're going to um, then you're going to uh, in March, April, you're going to be thinking about those focus groups and bringing those groups together, hearing people's stories, how you're going to collate that information. In June, July, you're going to have, um, have I missed out on months? No, March, April, April, March, <laughs> April, May, sorry. April, May, you're going to have that maybe that bigger meeting with um, with uh, stakeholders, statutory sector, private sector providers, all in the room having a discussion about wraparound childcare. And uh, you know, as that all that's happening, you're you're maybe dipping into this tool, um, maybe three or four or five times um, within that period, just to put in here's what's happened. We couldn't, and, and, and so no plan goes to plan. It's thinking, well, because something else came up within the community, we had to reschedule. Uh, we couldn't get the community centre for that date. That's changed now. Things have moved on a wee bit. We're, we're kind of roughly on plan. We didn't get the, the response to the survey that we'd hoped. We're going to have to try something else and, and maybe rejig it. So it's not about rejigging your plan, but actually um, uh, just recording it in, in, the, in the do section. And then there might be related documents. Maybe there's the market materials. Maybe there's the sign-in register. Maybe all of it is evidence um, towards um, demonstrating that you were involved in a good quality community engagement process. Um, within the tool, also at that stage, you can at the do stage or at the plan stage, you can invite other partners in to share the documents with you as well. So you might have a, 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 a childcare provider. You might have the NHS, and you can invite them in as partners. Uh, within this uh, planning tool as well, and they might want to put some documents up or put uh, information in about progress if they're responsible, maybe for that aspect of it. And then the last bit is just closing it off. We did all of that. We've got our option paper now just about ready. Let's do the review. And that's um, where myself and Kevin maybe sat down and we looked at what happened. And then against the, the we, we describe our meeting as in Paul and Kevin met on the 25th of July to, to look at um, the, the um, engagement process around about wraparound childcare. Uh, we used the, the I'll put in there the national standards for community engagement, but we used the principles for community engagement. Um, and we, we said we scored just as, uh, you know, we, we looked at them and we scored against um, inclusion, support, planning, uh, communication methods working together. We had a discussion about each of those and we um, we scored against that. And then we recorded some of the lessons that, that we, we learned um, for other team members. That it might be that uh, if we're going to do this in the future, don't use the, the community centre because, because of X, Y and Z, or um, that uh, we, we, we didn't include a, a particular voice that should have been there, or um, the materials maybe can be less complex and, and you know, uh, or maybe there's a partner that should have been involved in that process. So it's just thinking about some of those key lessons. Now, for you guys as workers, you'll say, well, why would I want to go into all of that detail in terms of planning out reviewing and uh, uh, doing and reviewing. And what I would say is the way we use um, voice in Scotland is that um, our review or our, our, our whole plan doing review gets clipped onto the back of our funding proposal. And it's way that we demonstrate to funders that we carried out a good quality community engagement process because very often that's what funders want to know. They want to know that it wasn't just 16 people in a room who came up with some good ideas for the community, but you're actually able to demonstrate that um, that you were involved in a, a community exercise. And most development workers that I meet will say, we know we do really good work. This is a great way of demonstrating that. Uh, it's also for line managers to see that what's actually happened, the quality of the engagement process that you've been involved in, and you know uh, they're able to kind of see uh, what you're doing. Also, as a team, you'll be able to in a year's time, you'll be able to see we've worked on seven engagements uh, within that particular community. This is what we've done. Other colleagues have, have been doing X, Y and Z. So as an organisation, I'll show you how that works. You'll be able to see what other people have been doing, some basic information if they haven't given you the permissions. But you'll be able to, you'll be able to see that over the last six months, there have been seven engagements around about transport, around about um, wraparound childcare, around about youth employment opportunities, 
um, you know, and, and you'll be able to say, what, what, what are we good at? You know, are, are, are we a wee bit weak at inclusion? Can we get better at that? Do we need to get the team together? Should we be thinking about how well we support um, people? Are our partnerships quite weak? And therefore we need to, you know, maybe have a, a discussions about that. So it kind of throws up a bit of information um, that you can actually use in terms of your engagement practice. But first and foremost, for most practitioners, it's been out, it's been able to say at the end of the engagement process round about wraparound childcare, here's our here's our application for half a million pounds to develop a wraparound childcare within our community. We did a, a really uh, extensive engagement process. We know it was good quality because we followed the principles of quality engagement. You'll see the report um, uh, stapled on to the back of the, the funding application um, and it becomes it, it becomes more powerful than the next application that, that doesn't have um, you know uh, information about the engagement process and 